how's everybody doing today? I am your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO of Victory Squared Technologies, Shafin Diamond Tejani. How are you doing today, Shafin? I'm good. Uh, thanks for having me, Rich. Thank you for joining us. Really excited to have you on the show. We haven't actually spoken face to face or had you on the show since we were talking about October 2019. And there's been a lot of development with Victory Squared Technologies since then. Why don't we get started a little bit about maybe you just tell us a little bit of an update on what's going on with Victory Squared Technologies, and then we can get into some more specifics about some of the things you've been working on. Sounds good. Well, first off, again, hope you and your family and all your viewers are, are keeping healthy and well. Um, again, thanks for having us on. So maybe I'll start with just with a quick refresher since it's been, you know, it's been uh, over a year since we've been on. Um, Victory Square uh, Technologies was created in 2017. Uh, the goal was to democratize access um, to the next best tech companies um, before they became uh, giants, you know, giving uh, retail investors early access to these, uh, these next gems. Uh, we have a diverse portfolio of about 23 companies, all focused on disruptive uh, technologies like digital health, blockchain, cybersecurity, virtual and augmented reality, and AI. Um, and in, you know, since we last spoke, uh, there's been a tremendous, uh, you know, number of updates. Uh, I'll begin with kind of identifying, you know, when 2020 started, we had three goals. Um, the first was to uh, continue our, our year over year, year over year growth. Uh, we ended the September 30th, nine months, uh, in 2020 at around, I think 13.6 million in net income around 18 cents a share. So we achieved significant growth, uh, you know, over those nine months. And from January 1st to December 31st of 2020, our share price appreciated from five cents to closing at 55 cents uh, Canadian to end the year. So that was one big goal and we, we achieved it. Um, the second was to diversify our investor base. And in November of 2020, we closed an upsized and oversubscribed financing uh, with Gravitas. Uh, so that again, big milestone. We brought some family offices, some strategic investors, and, and again, diversified uh, the number of, in, number of investors that were kind of um, in the, the Victory Square story. And the third was to spin off Fans Unite. So Fans Unite was one of our portfolio companies, one of the earlier portfolio companies. Uh, they went public in May of 2020 and throughout the year, uh, you know, I think they collectively raised over $20 million. The wow. market performed a couple of you know, large M&A transactions and the market cap is around 150, $160 million. So, you know, 2020, three goals, uh, you know, continue to increase the, the fundamentals of the business. You know, we did that both with um, an, an improvement in our share price and our daily active volume and our net income numbers for the, the nine months uh, ending September 30th uh, of 13.6 million uh, and 18 cents a share. Uh, diversifying our investor base, which we did with the financing we, we did with Gravitas and spinning off Fans Unite to really validate uh, our thesis of being able to find these, you know, great management teams, great companies early, and then be able to work with and build and kind of scale them up to create value for VST and VST shareholders. Can you talk a little bit about that deal? How does that work? How does that benefit shareholders of Victory Square Technologies? Is there a benefit for shareholders? Obviously, there's a benefit to the company. Can you explain how that works when you spin out Fans Unite? Absolutely. So the first benefit, benefit sorry, for VST shareholders is, in validating, is validating our thesis. So the thesis is that we can find these early stage management team and companies in disruptive sectors work with them in, for 12 to 36 months to you know, commercialize their, their, their business, and then to be able to spin that asset off and unlock value. So to be able to show the market what our cost base is to what the market is valuing that company you know, 36 months um, later. And in, in the case of you know, Fans Unite, Night, you're looking at you know, almost a five to 600% increase in, in, in value. What that does is that validates uh, the fact that we've got 22 other portfolio companies in the hopper and it allows analysts to better value what else is kind of underneath fans tonight and ultimately impacts VST's um, VST share price and, and, and asset value. 
The other big benefit is what do we do once the asset spin out, spun out? So as the asset spun out and increases in value, we have a couple of options on the VST side. One, we can issue a share dividend to VST shareholders. So if you're a VST shareholder, uh, you may receive a shares in a portfolio company that gets spun out that you can hold uh, or sell at your, at your leisure. The second is that we you know, liquidate some of that our, our, our position in that portfolio company when it's spun out, given that the valuation is significantly increased from our cost base and pay out a cash dividend. Or the third uh, is that we liquidate some of that position and reinvest it into continuing to build the funnel of disruptive technologies. All three ultimately you know, uh, you know, validate our, our, our VST thesis and add value to our, our bottom line and you know, which you know, ends up hopefully you know, impacting the share price positively. Now, that was one of the things that I was really impressed with you when we first met. You had this huge portfolio of companies. And I remember you talked about the goal of spinning out companies. And congratulations on spinning out your first company. Now, what I want to know is, I know that's not the last. So there's a couple other companies that you're looking to spin out, maybe as early as 2021. Game On and Immersive opportunities are available potentially for spin outs. Is that correct? That's correct. So uh, the next six to 12 months are going to be super exciting. You know, I think Fans Unite went out and performed very well, um, you know, not just for VST, but uh, VST shareholders, but also for Fans Unite investors and shareholders. Um, the next two game on and immersive technologies uh, will be spun out very, very shortly. And what those two will do is they will, um, you know, uh, validate a pattern. Uh, you know, investors might look at Fans United and say, okay, well, that's one. Well, you know, let, let's look at two or three to really, really, um, you know, buy into the fact that this is something that you can you know, consistently repeat. So Game On is scheduled to go out uh, in 2021. So in either the end of February, beginning of March. And Immersive Technologies uh, should be spun out shortly after March, April. Both are wholly owned subsidiaries of VST. So that's one thing for, for shareholders to note is they're wholly owned at this point. Um, so they're gonna unlock tremendous value for, uh, for, for VST and VST shareholders. Both are in really high growth sectors too. Gaming, esports, and virtual and augmented reality have not only been hot you know, pre-COVID, but I think with the pandemic, both of those spaces have, have, have grown by leaps and, and bounds. And, both companies have, uh, not only are they in the right sectors, but they have very strong boards, very strong management teams, and they've both validated their product um, with Fortune 500 companies. So in the case of immersive tech, they've worked with clients like ESPN, eBay, Intel, Bayer, uh, Snickers, uh, and then in, in the case of Game On, uh, NBC Universal, you know, Comcast, uh, the Real Housewives, you know, franchise. So. Both companies, great sectors, great teams, uh, validation on their product with, with large clients. Um, and both we anticipate trading very, very well uh, post listing. Wow, that's exciting. It's a lot of exciting things to look forward to for Victory Square Technologies and the shareholders. Can you elaborate a little bit on what your plan is for the next 24 months and elaborate a little bit on discrete care and telehealth? Yeah. So. In addition to spinning out uh, Game On and Immersive Tech, the third uh, area that we've not only seen a lot of momentum and traction in, but one which we truly believe in, not only you know in the over the course of the next six to twelve months, but twenty four onwards, is the digital health revolution. So everything we're doing in in that space, uh, it started last year in August, where we had a portfolio company and investments that we'd had since 2017 focused around personalized medicine. One of those companies had a, that was focused on uh, rapid testing and diagnostic uh, at-home testing had a, a COVID, uh, COVID antibody test. And what it would do was in under 15 minutes, it would let you know, the, the person know whether or not he or she uh, had COVID currently or had had COVID. That, triggered you know kind of a domino effect of, of opening doors around everything we are doing in the digital health space 
The first thing it did is it established relationships with regulatory bodies, not just in, uh, in North America, but in South America, which is where the, one of the portfolio companies was based in Brazil and Europe. It allowed us to establish distribution partnerships. So distribution into hospitals, retail, uh, and then ultimately consumers, because it was a product that everyone wanted. That really opened the door for us to be able to build not only a digital health business in, in Europe, um, South America, and in North America, but it gave us a big competitive advantage in that we already started off with, with, with consumers and customers for our products. So you mentioned a couple of uh, things. You mentioned discrete care. Um, so over the last 24 months, we've established relationships with you know, over 10,000 health professionals in over 50 states in the US. So these are health professionals that are able to perform uh, telehealth services uh, for customers and clients in all of those regions. We decided to initially focus on discrete care. So services that people may feel uncomfortable going and seeing a doctor in person, uh, this would allow them to, to do that from a press of a button. But in addition to providing that telehealth service, we also have a 503 pharmacy license to be able to prescribe. So we have same and now next day and now same day delivery prescription delivery uh, for all those patients. And a lot of the, 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 the services that we're providing over, over telehealth are, uh, re require a recurring prescription. So there's a great margin and great business model, recurring business model uh, on there. We started with discrete care and we've now expanded that to at-home diagnostic point of care testing for allergies, STIs, uh, COVID, um, and a variety of other, you know, um, variety of other at-home diagnostic tests, and then to the hospitality space. So to hotels, cruises, um, you know, I think when travel comes back, which it will, I think hotels need to create additional revenue streams, but also make, you know, the environment safer. So patients, uh, sorry, travelers, when they come, when they stay in a hotel, if they're feeling ill, instead of having to Google a walk-in clinic and leave the hotel to go and find one, they can see a physician uh, a you know, recommended referred physician from their hotel room and have prescriptions delivered if there is any sort of issue. And I think that'll be you know, key with the safety within a hotel um, for people to feel comfortable going and traveling, both for tourism purposes or, or business travel. We added something more recently. Um, about a week ago, we announced an acquisition of a company called Hydrate. So Hydrate was performing uh, on-demand, on-site, so almost like an Uber for healthcare where in addition to telehealth services, they were going on site um, to provide specialty type of services. So they were performing um, IV drip, uh, Botox, and other types of Metaspa services. So this not only increased our line of services that we can offer within our ecosystem, but it improved our technology and our team um, and our, you know, our, our offerings you know, kind of as a whole. Uh, which we'll be using that technology to also license into uh, Brazil uh, to build up our digital health portfolio there as well. So the digital health revolution, which is something that we, not, we see not only important today, but will be important tomorrow. And there'll be tremendous disruption. And for us, having uh, the technology, uh, the customer base, and the services, I think is going to give us a big um, you know, leg, leg up in there. And just one other thing to add to that, you know, a lot of our investments are focused around quality of life. You know, people are gonna, gonna always work, play, eat and communicate. Uh, what changes is how they do that. So technology has changed how we do that and how companies service that. So for us, quality of life is so key. And so health for us, we really believe that the next generation of healthcare will be more preventative. Uh, you know, for the last you know, decade or so, uh, healthcare has all been about treating once you've, you've got some sort of issue, but Today, with your, your iWatch and your iPhone and your you know, Freestyle Libre, we're able to collect a lot of real-time data uh, to help people um, prevent you know, in advance of getting some you know, certain, certain ailments. So. I love what you guys are doing. This is a, it's a very crazy time in history. The world is uh, really changing. I mean, we can't go anywhere without wearing a mask, right? Uh, I go to the gas station, got to wear a mask. I go to my son's soccer practices, soccer games, can't go watch the game. We're not even allowed to go watch the game. I have to sit in my car. The world has really changed. So I love the fact that you guys are trying to help solve this problem because 
it's a major problem. The world is stopped kind of. Um, my sister lives in the Cayman Islands. They have no COVID. Yes. Zero COVID. Nobody wears masks. Her son goes and plays hockey. They have a normal life. I would love for us to get back to that here in North America. The fact that you are working towards getting us closer to that, I think is phenomenal. So thank you for your service. If there was one thing you would want shareholders to know about Victory Square Technologies, what would it be? So I mean, there's, you know, there's our mission of democratizing access to you know, these next tech giants and the nature of the disruptive innovation we work on, uh, you know, which is you know, dealing with things that are going to, or technologies that are gonna help, like you mentioned, you know, have a positive impact on our environment um, and, our, and our health and, and you know, our, our, our social lives in, in our communities. But ultimately people invest to make a profit, to make money. And uh, what helps is when you can invest in something where you can make, uh, make money, but also feel good about what you're investing in, that's really what VST is, is, is about. Um, you know, I'm the largest shareholder, uh, you know, put my money where my, my mouth is. And I, you know, we, we seeded this company and haven't sold a single share, but ultimately, you know, we give entrepreneurs um, 23 chances of, of, of hitting a home run. Um, you know, access to some of the top companies from all over the world, uh, you know, disrupting, you know, all walks and all sectors and all geographies uh, of, of, of life. But the nature of the companies we're investing in, so not only is there profit here, uh, or profit potential here, but you can feel good about the companies you're investing in. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, all of these disruptive innovations, you know, generally, you know, help transform and solve some of the world's biggest problems. And so uh, you can make money and feel good about what you're, you know, you're investing in. You mentioned a little bit about your share structure and how you've got a huge position in the company. Can you talk a little bit about those two things, your share structure, how much yeah. is held by yourself, insiders and institutions, and also about your cash position that's very important to our global community of investors that are looking to invest. Can you talk about those two topics? Yeah, absolutely. So we currently have about 76 million shares out. Um, very good. I think there is about... 10 or 11 million special warrants that came from the financing that we did in November, which converted into, into common shares um, very, very shortly. So I think issued and outstanding will be around uh, you know, 85 million shares. Uh, management uh, and insiders own, I think, close to 38 to 40%. Great. Um, I believe I'm at 18 to 22%, roughly around uh, that number. Um, haven't sold a, a single share. When the business was was founded, um, myself and my business partner, you know, seeded the first, you know, I think ten to twelve million dollars uh, into, you know, really building this, building out this this portfolio. So, um, you know, tight, fairly, you know, closely held uh, share structure, um, good man management ownership. Uh, myself. Um, you know, as the largest shareholder, uh, current cash position is probably around five million Canadian dollars. But our burn is is only around I think 65, 70 grand a month. So we've got you know a ton of coverage uh, on that. Um, and one thing to note over the in the past, so November was our first actual like you know non insider uh, you know financing that we held. So in the past, I'd set up a ten million dollar convertible note uh, to provide the business with funding if it ever saw opportunity. Um, and also, you know, if it saw opportunity and, and the share price was lagging, you know, the business didn't have to dilute, you know, I could provide uh, that capital to the business to grow. So funding and financing and access to capital has never been, you know, an issue, you know, for us. Nor do I think it'll be an issue for us, you know, going, uh, going forward. That's great. Well, it sounds like you guys are on track to have a huge year. Congratulations on all your success thus far. Shafin Diamond Tajani, the CEO of Victory Square Technologies. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully, you can join us again. Hopefully, it's not going to be 14 months before our next video. If you ever have any big breaking news, Shafin, please join us, whether it's live or we do a pre recorded video. Love to invite you back on our show. Anytime you have big breaking news or even want to do an update, love to invite you back on our show. If you guys like the video, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere, and subscribe. And remember, Rich TV Live is strictly for education and entertainment purposes. 
always consult a financial advisor before you make an investment in anything we talk about. Chances are when you go and speak to your financial advisor, financial advisors are going to say, that's a really good pick. And that's what we love to hear. We love to get back feedback from financial advisors that say, where'd you hear those picks? Those are great picks. I think VST is a company that has a great future. I said that since day one, a company that's undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed with the portfolio of companies that you're working with in the world that we're in right now with the tight share structure and money in the bank, like you're talking about, I think that the uh, future looks bright for Victory Squares Technologies. And thank you so much for joining us, Shafin. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, yeah, uh, special shout out to all your viewers and, and, and audience. Thanks for all the support uh, with VST. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys for watching. If you're not winning, you're not watching. We bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. We brought you Victory Square Technologies first. And I think this is a story and a business that's just getting started. Thank you guys for watching. Shafin, thank you for joining us. Everybody have a great day.